Hello, I think we should be uh, live. Hi again, welcome to the Samathus Off Grid Dev Stream. Um, my name's Rich, I'm one of the devs behind Off Grid. We're a little four person, five person ish studio. Uh, we are making a stealth hacking game called Off Grid. Some of you folks already know all about it, um, but if you're just chancing, uh, along on Twitch here and you found us, then um, then Off Grid is basically a stealth hacking game. Uh, it's The way we tend to put it is it's a game where data is your most powerful weapon. Um, and essentially, um, you play a noob technophobe who is attempting to learn to hack in order to navigate the world of the cybers, uh, to put it in shorthand. Um, I'm just going to try and turn my audio down in my ears because I don't know about you guys, but this music is really loud for me. Um, so if you just give me a second. Um, mm -hmm. Let's turn that down a bit. There we go. Um, if uh, anyone's in the chat or in the Discord and fancies giving me a thumbs up as to sort of sound and buffering, I know we had a little bit um, of a buffering problem last time, a couple of days ago. So um, let me know how things are. I can always uh, try and switch some settings around, um, change the bitrate, see how it goes. Um, yeah, let me know. So, uh, without further ado, let me just pop into the Discord and make sure that people are watching. Do, do, do. Cool. So, um, well, there's there's a quick question there that I can answer actually from imod98. Um, the question is, are we planning on making any of the modding or scripting available in any other languages than Lua? The answer is no. Basically, uh, we specifically abstracted all of the gameplay and content into Lua um, because it's a really lightweight embedded language. Um, it's common in modding, and so lots of people carry. Uh, knowledge across from having modded other games in Lua and because Lua is actually an interesting language in the infosec scene it, it tends to get used in all kinds of embedded applications and bits and pieces um, in, in particular there's a kind of nice romanticism that I mentioned last uh, last time we were streaming about how each device that is hackable in off-grid is essentially, essentially its own Lua virtual machine by nature of how Lua works. So um, if you write a hackable device in a mod in the game, it's technically a computer. It has an inventory, it has IO, um, it can execute scripts, it can receive payloads and deal with them in appropriate ways based on how you've written the machine. So there's a lot that Lua brings to the table for a hacking game uh, and yeah, we, we've basically chosen to, to develop an API around that in order to hopefully create quite a powerful tool set for, for modders to, to play around with. So yeah, I hope that answers your question. Uh, feel free to like follow up in the Discord um, or in the chat in Twitch. I'll just make sure I've got the Discord up on my screen because looking at it on my phone is just not, not ideal. Um, Give me a sec. Um, and it, if the stream starts really slowing down because I've loaded Discord, then um, then let me know. Um, C sharp is obviously something that um, that we build a lot of the back end in in Unity. If you, if you're a Unity developer, you or, or you played around with it, you'll know that. But yeah, we 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 really found that there was more we could do with. Um, essentially creating a Lua API and, and, and setting boundaries around that um, for people to play around with. <laughs> I 
um, it looks like everything's kind of following through. So without further ado, what I might do is just um, uh, drop us into, and this this is the scary bit, drop us into uh, what I'm up to at the minute. I suppose I should have turned off this starting soon sign. Like that, <laughs> a little while ago. Because uh, we've started, uh, don't know whether you noticed. Um, Right, I'm going to jump straight into the the build that we're working on at the minute. Um, it it was working this afternoon. I have been fiddling around with some stuff, so uh, <laughs> bear with me. I think I tested it just before we came on air. Um, let's have a look, I suppose. So, if I um, just switch around. Yeah. Anyone who has sort of watched us stream the game before, um, or uh, yeah, has um, has played the demo um, at say EGX, we were at left field, um, or if you're in the states, we were at PAX uh, East back in April. Um, we were in G uh, San Francisco at GDC. Um, so there's a couple of times people might have gotten their hands on playing this um, pretty early pre-alpha build of off-grid, um, but uh, yeah, I'll. Um, the reason I'm mentioning that is hopefully you can see this now here. This is what the the level that you would have played or have seen looks like. It's um, obviously. Uh, since you've seen last, um, usually you don't see all these grids. This is all kind of um, reorganized geometry, so it's still in its sort of prototype um, material state. That's all being switched over um, at the minute. I, I moved a few things around, so uh, I basically wanted a tool called Pro Builder, which is this little um, set of tools up here available, and uh, it's way easier to use uh, for snapping things onto the grid if, if you use their their grid materials. Um, so yeah, uh, looks a little ugly in here like that. I mean, if, if we put the lighting on, you start to see it looks a bit more like what you all know off-grid as. Uh, and there's obviously trigger volumes and bits and pieces that you wouldn't usually see when you're playing. Um, I'm just going to try running the game for us, I think. We'll see, um, see what we see. Might take a second to load. It will always a little bit longer for everything to compile um, in Unity Editor. There's a Lua error. Okay, yeah, that is because I was messing around with some Lua earlier that I need to revert. Um, bugger. <laughs> well, we'll do some live debugging. The one problem that um, we unfortunately have with the streaming is. Um, I have to work out of Atom a lot of the time, and OBS really doesn't like it. Um, so, let me just try and comment out a couple of things and get this going. It's, it's a real dev stream when you know uh, when you know the developer is fixing broken things. second so what I'm doing here um, which you won't be able to see <laughs> um, actually I'll tell you what I'll load give me a second I'll load this in um, I'll load it in the Notepad++ or Microsoft Code, which is like or Visual Studio Code, which is like like a lightweight version of Visual Studio. Um, yeah, let's do it this way. So to be able to see, um, 
little cheaty uh, let's put me in this as well this is some of the stuff I've been working on recently so uh, you can kind of see some of the level design plans uh, for hackable devices that I'm pushing into that level at the minute um, just going to add my webcam so that you can see my beautiful mug right here like that and next I'm going to open up the main mission script um, so in off grid essentially um, scripting the game all revolves around one big central mission script that then your hackable device scripts uh, your data scripts your character personalities all stem off of so I might as well give you a kind of quick overview of, of how that works um, while I'm fixing something so if I just jump in here Nearly there, folks. Where are you? Levels, newspaper, content, the apostle mission. Right. Open with Notepad Plus Plus. You should be able to see that now. So I'll uh, enlarge this me a bit tell me um, in the discord when that's at like a legible size I don't want it too big because obviously need to be able to see some stuff on screen um, this is a massive script FYI this is um, this is what a mission script looks like uh, it's over a thousand lines so it's about 1080 lines of code at the minute and and that that's still got quite a lot of devices to be connected the the, the um, apostle level that most people have seen in the demo is is sort of it's been um, specifically made slightly bare of devices so that it, there weren't too many red herrings that threw people off you know um, building a demo is very different to building a game a lot of the time so what you want is a kind of streamlined experience that people can um, find their way through in a short amount of time because you, you don't know how long you've got people's attention for um, so uh, yeah essentially There we go. So that is um, that is legible. Good. Um, I've lost my trail of thought, though. Um, so let's jump back to what I was saying about the main mission script. Um, essentially, like the mission scripts in the game are set up with the basic mission information. So here we've got the start time, which is the date or the setting. We've got the basic mission logic to start with. Um, we then set up our characters, and, and we've sort of likened it a little bit to being like a movie script in some sense. I mean, as, as far as writing programming uh, languages go. Uh, if, if anyone's ever taken a look at Inkle, which is the sort of narrative scripting engine written by um, Inkle Studios it's Ink by Inkle Studios they, they make a lot of very interesting branching story games um, they released a sort of open source version of their internal um, scripting language for making branching narrative and uh, it's it's pretty cool uh, but we and we looked at integrating it but we kind of decided you could actually do all that and more with Lua. Maybe not quite as um, prettily for, for the sake of pure narrative games, but Off-Grid isn't a pure narrative game. There's, there's quite a lot more to it. And so having the, the flexibility of Lua um, 
we can make branching narratives in interesting ways, but still have the kind of gameplay functionality that we wanted to. Um, so as I, as I was saying, you kind of define the characters here. Um, so we've got Joe, our main character. We've got the guards. Um, it has their display name, their internal name for us referencing in other scripts, the prefab model that they're using, um, the agent Lua script that defines how the AI behaves, um, the character type enemy, um, the color texture, and this is something that people will be uh, interested in seeing a little bit of in the long run. I won't be going into that today, but uh, the characters are all fairly moddable from a fairly easy few clicks of um, of a color lookup table texture. So uh, there's a swatch of colors, and you can change the characters hair color, skin tone, eye color, shoe color, jacket type, jacket length, just by switching some colors around. Um, and the same with the sort of metallicness of the, the different things that the guy's wearing. If you want him to have highly specular hair, or her to have highly specular hair, then you can. Um, we've got the profile script here, which is um, a Lua script that essentially describes the profile of a character and that's <clears throat> that's an interesting thing I guess to go into a little bit um, with how the um, how the whole mechanic around socially profiling the NPCs works so if I was to go to characters we're looking at Barry Peterson aren't we so uh, pop him in here um, this is less a personality and more if you imagined uh, um, there was some uh, omnipotent uh, omnipresent force like uh, prism or uh, I think what was it what was it called um, was it mutant broth the one of the major kind of GCHQ or NSA programs that profiles every citizen um, this is like writing up one of those, and it, it, it's it actually reads quite a lot like a docs. Um, if you know, there might be a few people in the chat here who have um, been on Pastebin, <laughs> and if you've been on Pastebin, you've probably seen uh, docs, um, people being doxed. And usually, you don't get their um, gluttony value, but I'm sure there's a few docs out there that do describe something similar. Um, but you have um, the tags, the title of Barry, his first name, his middle name, Aldo, his last name, Peterson, um, the different nicknames he uses. Um, uh, what we got here, derogatory name, um, Fish. <laughs> his favorite uh, husband and wife pet name is, is Deary, Cutie Pie, Sugar. And, and, and this profile defines what kind of data he might generate as a character. So all of the data generated by the NPCs is procedural. Um, and, and as you can see, this is just a start. I mean, we, we, this is a fairly small one, and that goes 200 odd lines. It has verbs and actions that he uses. Um, it has his favorite drinks, iron brew, lager, and blood, apparently. Um, he likes pistachios also. Um, has like his favorite hashtags to use and uh, what exclamations he might be more likely to use. Um, uh, some stuff about his mood and psychology. Um, we have his address. Um, we have his best friend's name, his sister's name. Um, we have the websites he uses and his game servers that he's likely to be on. So basically, that's a, a breakout Lua script that, that jumps off of the um, the mission script um, and, and we're only sort of 70 lines in but that, that sort of shows the depth at which you start to write up characters in off-grid and, and this is all Lua and it's all available in the streaming assets folder on um, on the game so uh, like you have a copy of the game you have access to this stuff um, to change and, and, and play around with uh, as, as you wish um, before even opening up Unity, um, and and I'll go, I can go into that in a little bit um, on another stream because essentially today I'm just going to talk about how if you had a, a 
a vanilla copy of the game and you weren't interested in downloading our specific modding tools, how you could just mod the Lua to rewrite the story or to, to rewrite other devices or other functionality. Um, so yeah, uh, you have um, then uh, all the rest of the guard names. You have virtual characters, um, Smedley, the Hacker Wiki. Um, you have the inventory items that the character has, which you can define here. Um, so he has a USB key and a mesh node. Um, you have the PGP keys that the, um, the, 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 the character himself carries for decrypting messages through the crypto chat app that um, guides you through the game. Uh, you have all of the data that's being defined for various um, interactions or uh, mission objectives. Um, so that includes even silly things like the cola ad that gets sent to you and the cola ad has its own um, uh, script for what it, what functionality it does. It actually triggers a conversation. You, you, you have a vending machine that is spamming adverts uh, and when you receive that advert it, it triggers a conversation with one of your companions who tells you how you can, can use it against some of the NPCs in the building for instance. Um, yeah, uh, then we set up the networks. So here we set up the 4G network, the Wi-Fi network, the mesh node network, um, and those are things that you can get access to by uh, uh, acquiring varying user access or admin keys, and you can set the passwords for those or the, or the key required for those. Um, here we set up the devices. So as you can see, it's a fairly long list of devices here, printers, soda machines, smart water bottles, smart fridges, Dave's phone, dev laptop, office radio, elevator, things like that. Um, and then we've got the objectives. And so the objectives are kind of like the plot of your script, um, if we were talking in movie script terms. So all of that sort of sets the characters and the setting uh, and kind of builds the scene with devices. And now we've got what's going to be happening. So you enter the building, uh, what that's triggered by, what hints are sent to you. Uh, what objectives that then gives you. The objectives, they all roll into your to-do list app, which is in a, a little in-game kind of thing that shows you through what you're doing, uh, what conversations it starts with, what characters, uh, and how you complete that objective. And, th and that kind of continues on with how you set up modals for describing what people will need to do in your level, um, and uh, yeah, a whole bunch of other stuff along those lines. Um, just going to turn a light on and see whether I can get. I think it's just that this t shirt is too close to green, so we've got a little bit of interference there. Um, what else? Um, we're still setting up. Yeah, security key, bathroom. These are all objectives. Get to the server room, server access, find the journalist's laptop, connect to the mesh network, upload leaked documents. Um, and then the rest of it is mission setup stuff which just connects all the, the right devices to the right place so adding a hackable device um, to the right network etc uh, etc et setting the door key zones for different security access cards uh, setting up and clearing the inventory um, where which characters connected to which networks um, which devices are connected to which networks and then some of the modals and content stuff. Uh, I think that's probably about it. And the, yeah, then the different trigger volumes for mission objectives. And that probably sums up what goes on in that huge script. So that may come across as quite a daunting thing. Um, the thing to bear in mind is A, a lot of this is generated for you automatically when you first build a level if you're building one using our modding tools or if you're just opening up the game and you want to edit an existing mission this is already all in place and all you need to do is start tweaking values and, and changing screens and, and um, uh, you know toying with the logic uh, so it may seem like a, a heck of a lot of stuff but I promise you um, I am not the most capable lure coder in the world, in fact not in um, this company by a long shot, so 
I manage it um, and we built it specifically so that people who haven't been exposed to code can do some interesting stuff. Uh, so, so yeah, I mean, I think, um, I think that's, um, that's a good, hopefully a good summary of that stuff. So let's, um, let's have a quick look. Cause I, I suppose the thing I was going to do was show you, um, a bit of the game. Uh, but I was also going to fix a bug first, wasn't I? Uh, because I've introduced one just ahead of the stream, which is not to me, basically. I, I'm sorry for that. Uh, <laughs> right, let's let's have a quick look here. So now that you know a little bit about how that mission script works, that, that Lua error was in the script. Um, and so if, if you were to tweak some of these values in um, the streaming assets folder in the game, um, that's the Lua error you would, you'd get this kind of Lua error come up um, in your game. Uh, let's just make the screen a little bigger. Um, and you might not be able to read that, but it says Lua execute script error. The Apostle mission, Lua 292, that's the line in that script, the Apostle underscore mission dot Lua, expect the symbol in a smart bathroom user log. So it's probably just um, some missing syntax. But basically, I'll switch back over to the code and we'll go to line 292. Where is it? Am I back again? Just gonna hold here until I get a thumbs up as to whether. Okay, I am back. Um, not sure what happened there, folks. Um, sorry, I guess. Uh, let's have a quick check. Just make everything I'm sure everything is. So, um, I should be back again if I can get a couple of thumbs up from folks to say, uh, go ahead and keep streaming, then I, I will. Okay, cool. Right. We are back. Back on the uh, second ever, um, second ever official off-grid Samaipus dev stream. I was just taking folks through the basics of how uh, a mission is set up in off-grid, um, and so I think what we'll probably do is, if it's going to work, I will just try and. Um, I'll just try and get the game in the background for you to, to see a little bit of. Uh, so transition over here. This is off grid. Um, for those of you, as I mentioned earlier, who have just stumbled into our Twitch channel, uh, um, basically off grid is a stealth hacking game about data privacy. So that gives you a, a little bit of an idea of what we're about. Um, Let's have a little look, see. Essentially, you should be able to see this now. I was just trying to debug getting the current build to play because I I'd added a bug just before we came live, but it looks like this is going to run. No, it's not going to. Oh, I bet you I didn't save the script. 
Okay, cool. Well. Switch back. To here. Um Yeah, it's not saved. Yeah, this is this is a common if I don't know how many people in here have um have uh, written code before. Uh, it's a common mistake of mine. Fix a bug, don't save the script, and then spend ages scratching your head as to uh, why it's still there. Um, but let's see. I've just saved that, so let's transition back across. Try and get this playing. Different symbol now. So six eight nine, line six eight nine in the mission bar. So what I had essentially done before we had a little network error on the stream um, was just quickly take us through what a mission script in Off Grid looks like. Um, as I said, you sort of define the characters, the networks, the devices. 689 sounds like it will probably be in the device setup sort of section. 689 setup mission add characters. And yes, Obscure Moth, I did hit record this time. Although I hit record only once we had had the network problem. So it's going to be uh, the, the beginning shenanigans will have been missed off the recording, which is probably a good thing. Um, uh, okay. Uh, I seem to have introduced a problem here. Hmm. Well, um, if I suppose for everyone who's used to um, used to watching dev streams. This is what dev streams are about. Just breaking things and fixing things. The, the difference is it, it was broken when we started. So you get to just watch me fix things. Isn't that... That's good, isn't it? You, you didn't have to watch me break anything. Um, See anything wrong with that? Are there any uh, questions in the chat on off grid um, and the kind of mission scripting stuff that I described um, a second ago while I try and route this? Bug down. Well, in which case, we just keep looking. Simple new function. Uh, there's a question what's the best part about it being an indie dev? Um, the best part about being an indie dev 
is probably the creative side of it, I suppose. Um, I, for anyone who doesn't know anything about my background, I used to work in film and television um, as, a, I suppose, a technical artist would be the would be the term. Um, I I used to work on adverts a lot <laughs> when I was in film and television, and that can get pretty soul destroying pretty quickly. So the best thing about being an indie dev is not making things for some massive corporate pain relief medicine uh, manufacturer or um, some floor cleaning product. Um, you know. Indie dev, you know, means a means a lot of different things to a lot of different people, I suppose. Um, so, for me, I really like the fact that video games tell stories. I'm a big fan of like Hideo Kojima's work. Um, uh, certainly, sort of the, the early Metal Gear Solids in the franchise, um, and. Uh, I just I just like the fact that you can explore systems and narrative in in conjunction uh, through video games. So the opportunity to do that is is the kind of the thing that I cherish most. I guess. Uh, I think. Probably going to need to do. This is a first for me, coding live with um, having to keep people entertained. It's something that I'm not sure I've uh, necessarily got the requisite skills for yet. I'm gonna have to work on. Um, usually, I like to put my headphones on, listen to music, and not have anyone disturb me. So, trying to talk about something else at the same time. As fixing a bug is it's definitely difficult, um, but we're going to keep doing this kind of thing, uh, so I better get good at it, I guess. Um, it'd be helpful if I knew what I had changed. Um, I think what I'm going to do make a copy of this script and revert it to the working version. I think that would be the smartest thing for me to do. Um, just give me a second. I can't help my head getting cut off, I'm afraid. Um, that is uh, based on me getting closer to the camera than I need to be. Um, it's um, I, I, you, I can't look at everything I need to. And, uh, I'm standing still. So I'm afraid you'll have to put up with my head being cut off a few times. Um, So, what we do in this instance, if I transition over here quickly, I should now be able to revert this. that is reverted. Right, let's um, try this again.
Sounds like it's working. No. <laughs> Couldn't add net device. Sleeping guard phone object doesn't exist in level. Aha. Yes. Quite. Okay, that's easy. Well, what we're going to do here is we are probably just going to go through and fix some names of objects. So, um, you can hopefully see here in, in off grid, when you define a hackable device, we've got this sleeping guard here. Basically, the script relates to the name of the device. Um, so we will copy this name, which is the updated name I gave it, and we will go back to here and transition over. This should give us device names. So, as I mentioned earlier in the stream, uh, essentially we've got the mission info, character definitions, inventory items, data, networks, devices, and I changed the name of Sleeping Guard Phone. To Dave W's ePhone 3C. I'm just going to try and copy across here. Come on. Python here. File shouldn't be logged. Maybe it is. Just do some sneaky version control wrangling. Just a second. It's content. There we go. Who's got that? Who else has got that checked out? Checked out by Steve. All right, Steve. I'll have to diff. I have to agree to diff agree. Right. See. I didn't actually know that that's yeah that's how Notepad++ works it won't let you make changes in a locked file so um, we are changing the name of this phone basically um, I think we called it just Dave's phone We can set the data color that it uses in here as well. Um, you can set it by RGB values, but um, uh, 
and you can set it on a, on a float as well, a zero to one float. Um, and you can also set it by named colors, uh, but I don't have any of the snippets in um, Notepad++, plus plus, so you will be able to see that from here. Let's try this thing again. Oh, Unity has, has been open too long today. It's not very happy. Might be a case of have you turned it on and off again? Being a good thing to do. Transition to the code again while I just kill the unity. It's not playing ball. Um, by the way, if you like the music in the background here, this is part of what will form the off-grid soundtrack. Um, it's the map screen music, um, sort of ambient type stuff. It's written by Jonas, our sound designer, um, and I like it a lot, actually. Um, it's, it loops quite nicely. I don't, you, know, you don't get bored of it very quickly. Um, here we go. Right, this should work a little faster now. Let's see. Let's see what the next error is. There might be a few devices that I renamed before I reverted the script. We'll see. Always takes a minute to load when you're doing stuff in the editor. Come on. Here we go. No. Nope. Null table passed into admin device. this whole day's phone stuff. Let's just keep it at that for now. For reference, I've just changed that back to sleeping guard phone. Try again. I should have said that in hacker voice. We're in. No, that wasn't very good. Um, okay, cool. Right. So, um, if you're still with me after extensive debugging and uh, eventual reversion and things that I'm going to have to merge later to fix again, um, this is off grid. Uh, this is the current state of off grid. Um, and essentially what I was going to show you all a bit of is 
how to script one of these hackable devices. So essentially, um, the hackable devices in the game are all kinds of different things. Let's get through this. This is a little crypto chat conversation where you're being guided through how to get into the building, how to use your tools. Um, for anyone who hasn't seen the game before, once again, um, basically you play a bit of a technophobe noob whose daughter has been spirited away by the forces that be. Um, so, in order to get to the bottom of that, you, you get taught how to hack. So, it's a little bit stuttery because it's in editor. Um, frame rate obviously better in builds, but we're, we're playing it dirty here. So we can SSH into various devices, this is sort of a good example here, would be this desk lamp. Um, oh, I've changed the, the resolution so the resolution's off. So we SSH into hack a hackable device. It's got default credentials and you can get to the system settings. And in this one, we can power on this eye desk lamp thing. Pop that up here. And there's the lamp that's on. In this instance, it's not doing much for us. In fact, it might wake him up. So if it had been on by default, we might want to turn it off and turn the radio to a lullaby or something like that and that the whole point of the game is that you change the environment to uh, essentially try and socially engineer or distract the guards so in this instance we, we want him to stay asleep so we try and make an environment that we can make noise in without waking him up um, so you know a bit classical FM on, on the radio for instance um, but so what I wanted to do with you was write our own device um, along those lines. Um, so I don't know whether, um, well, I know that some of you will have seen the Offgrid wiki and that's um, that's at wiki.offgridthegame.com. Uh, let's just ooh. pull that up. This is the Discord. Join the Discord, please. Come and uh, hang with us in Discord. Hex, Hex and Kex, uh, for instance. We, got any, we haven't got any more questions in here. A minute. So, essentially, what I was going to show you on this is the this is the wiki. We have some guides on. Devices, device scripting. Um, this sort of takes you through the basics of writing a device. That's how you kind of target an SSH into a, a hackable and what they look like. And here's a little breakdown of what the code looks like for for one of these. So you know, essentially in Lua you define the device can access true, you can set that to have a password or a certain amount of metadata that you need to have collected on the owner of the device in order to crack their machine. Uh, you've got an update rate so that you can put animated um, ASCII art or other bits and pieces that rely on a timer like a clock into the back end of the device. Um, you've got an update function You've got define, defining of the GUI, and this is where Lua and tables come into play. You've got the type of GUI that we're going to use. Um, you've got the header kind of description. Um, you've got you can set the color for the highlight and the background, and then you start defining these buttons in tables. So, and they have an on-click function, which essentially you can use pretty much any of the lower API functionality so and, and when I say any of it I mean basically any of this stuff as a start and that's just in the mission 
Lure API, adding hackable devices, starting objectives, triggering auto saves, connecting devices, getting strings and numbers, adding net devices, connecting to networks, sending messages to players, completing objectives, um, or any of these other things like, let's say, in the animator Lure API, you could set off an animation that you've created or a particle effect. Um, so yeah, pretty extensible in varying ways. We were gonna look at how to script a device. So the way that you go about this, it's all here. So essentially what I was gonna do was create a ransomware elevator um, on the stream with you. Um, we, we have elevators in the game, but we didn't want to set them up. Um, so what we've decided on is them being ransomware, so they can't be used. Um, a stealth game kind of, a lot of the time, relies on you using stairs and stairways and stairwells, and we wanted to come up with a, a kind of a nice kind of universal law or logic as to why you were always using the stairs instead of the elevator. Um, and in many ways, the idea that some skid cheeky scrub has essentially ransomware all the elevators in the city um, seemed like a nice way to go. So what we're going to do today is we're going to write that device script for a ransomware. Um, Ransomware elevator. So what I'll do just pop it here. We'll take this example. Example code from the wiki for a device. And then we'll switch over and we will create a new little file. content devices Call this elevator. Um, yeah, and we're just we're just gonna paste in the basic stuff. And condense this down a bit so it's easier to read on screen.
much of this stuff is going to stay the same. Um, we're making a pretty simple thing here. So kind of the whole point of a, a, having a ransomware device is it can't do anything. All it has is an inventory of encrypted files. I'm not gonna go through in the mission script how we send data to, to populate the inventory yet. Basically in, in off-grid you can set it up so that the NPCs are going around using different devices at different times and they are going to be able to populate um, uh, populate that, that device's inventory with data pertaining to their habits or their uses or in the mission script setup if you want stuff to already be on those devices you, you send it yourself. In this instance we're just going to fake it for now um, and we'll evolve this script through different streams um, I would say. Um, so yeah. with me a second. So, what would be the first thing to do in this ransomware? Well, I mean, if you're going to have ransomware, um, ransomware devices, I would have said the first thing to do is probably find some ASCII art that's appropriate. So I quite like uh, ASCII.co.uk. There's loads of fun stuff on here. Um, we only got a small window, so we want some smaller designs. This one's pretty good. I like this one quite a lot. Um, so um, what we'll probably do Is we'll define a new button and we'll call it skull just for now um, oh I need to switch switch back to the code so Hopefully you can see this, but we're going to, our button, like basically we've got our can access function, we're just going to leave that open for now so that anyone can access the device. Uh, we don't need to do anything with the update. Um, no, we can leave these, these in for now, I suppose. We don't need to print up. Um, we're just using the end curses back end. There's going to be a bunch of different UI types that you can use, uh, but for now, end curses uh, is the one. We'll have desktop and maybe some other bits and pieces, maybe mobile devices and a more kind of IoT management console. Um, I'd, I'd love it if we could do some industrial control system stuff, but they're so custom that maybe they won't work as a generic UI. Um, so yeah, in this button, we're, we're going to call this Ransom Skull. If I can type my game controller. Right. Ransom Skull. Um, uh, da -da -da -da. Well, I guess actually that's the string that goes into it. What we want to do is pop our ASCII art in there. So, I think the first thing we'll do, because ASCII art can be a bit funky, make a bit of space for it. I think when I was messing around, this kind of worked fairly well actually. 
So we'll put in our, our button for our, our skull for our ransomware there um, and we'll maybe call this button. Skull, so we can reference it more easily. Skull. I mean, Danish for the way I keep spelling it when I'm Jason. Um, yeah, so I mean that would be the first, the first thing to do basically. So um, we'll hit save on that, and there's a bit of a here's one I made earlier element to this. Um, but if if we switch back to um, Unity and we head over to the entrance where we turn up. There's a oh actually you're just in the back of the yard I mean like basically we could just drop an elevator model in here in front of us because we oh, we're lazy like that elevator doors. this in here. There's our elevator. It's going to be a bit dark because it's not been light mapped. And um, in our mission.lua we'll go ahead and define the elevator. Um, actually just got to you guys should be able to see this. <clears throat> Going back to our mission. So we've, we've got these definitions for other devices. We, we just called our script elevator, didn't we? So elevator. Open that table up. It needs an internal name. We'll just make this nice and easy. Call the elevator two. Well, we'll just copy this stuff. Data color sign is fine. Um, and that, obviously, needs to be elevator. Yep. So, having done that, um, we should now be able to go through and add the elevator device to all the network connections and, and whatever else that we need to put it in on. So, we go... Uh, Just a few. 
objectives. It's down to the bottom to add devices to things. So it's not a mission object in the same sense. Elevator. Elevator. ID cards. Connect devices to networks. So We want one that's on 4G to copy. That'll make it easier. To test. So, that's going to say elevator. User access key. That should be fine. I think that's it. Famous last words. So, to all intents and purposes, that should give us this elevator hackable, which, oh, that's the thing we need to do. Then, because we're doing this on the Unity side, um, this is something that I'll teach you to set up for at a later date, but, and you could just go in and, and mess with an existing device, and, and potentially we should have done that um, from the start. Um, but I'm showing you how to add a completely new one. Um, we add a component which you'll be able to do when you have the mission tool, the modding tools. We add a mission object of type hackable. Take off generic. Save the scene. We put it on the right layer. We add the hackable tag. We validate it with a collider so that it can be found. And now, let's try hitting play. This this should be a hackable elevator. It's there in front of us. The question will be Is it visible to us? No. Apparently. Why don't know? funny how your mind can go blank when you're in the middle of trying to stream something that is utterly straightforward in the context of the game. It's in there, it's called... Aha! It's still called Elevator Doors. Uh, you can't actually see that because my screen is not a 16 by 9 screen. I'm going to move that over there. You can probably see that a little better now. Over here, we've got the name of the thing. Let's keep squeezing it in. Is that a little better for you? Um, yeah, uh, this just needs to be called Elevator. Because the internal name needs to match the object name. So, 
with hit save. And all being well and good. Let's put that out so you can see a little better. This should now be a basic hackable device. Told you it was simple, or at least it was a simple thing that I missed. Back in a second, we will just move the file location for that. Oh. X. Drop it. In here. Right. Okay. find a different path as to where the Lua script for the hackable object can be found. We'll be there in a sec. This should work. Thanks, last words. Come on, Unity. Come on, boy. Come on, Unity. Come on, boy. There we go. It is thinking about it. It is thinking about it. There we go. Okay. So, um, that is that. It's loading, <laughs> indexing a nil value. Call a nil value. One one. Location. No. No, that should be fine. Mm. This should be there. Devices. Elevator. Dot. That's fine. Spell elevator correctly each time. something in the script itself.
look here. It's not helpful, but. in the notepad instead of the usual IDE but we will get there wish that much So, just going to check, oh, it's, <laughs> yeah, okay, for a start, update rate has moved, no, that doesn't matter too much. Update function, let's just get rid of this update function. And we just got device can access return true because we, we basically don't want to have to validate with credentials on this device because we're just testing it for now. Curses. Header, right, let's just put some interesting content in here as well. That uh, we can say this is the um, let's call it the up and down elevator. Six thousand. They tore. Come on, Rich. Up and down of eight to six thousand. Uh, but it's been encrypted, so we could put some X's inside and right. Elicrypt is your daddy now. Is. And you know, like we're writing the the kind of um, the ransomware version of this right now, but you could uh, always just change all of this information with a payload script that you've written. So you could you could write a piece of Lua data that you can collect or find from somewhere that is the ransomware uh, binary and if you sent that to a device of the correct type it would switch the text out and lock the files um, in that device so you know we, we won't get onto that today we, I might use that as an example of um, how to, to write payloads um, in Lua for, uh, for off-grid um, Basically, yeah, t taking this from being a normal elevator to, to the the ransomware version that we see currently. Um, so there's our let's, let's make the colours a little more interesting and, and use. I know that we've got um, some fairly standard colours in there, so we can go background colour. Oh, it's American, isn't it? Colour red. Uh, highlight colour. Let's let's make it clash. Yeah. Uh, let's make the highlight color green. So, 
<laughs> my typing is terrible. Um, yeah, so we're setting up the list of buttons. We're going to put in... Um, uh, oh my god, I've just found the error. Fuck's sake. Pardon my French. Um, if you're not used to coding... That is a fairly regular thing. I missed a semicolon. Well, in this instance, I missed a uh, uh, an equals. Um, missing a semicolon is a big thing in C derivian, uh, derivative languages. Um, and in Lua, missing out a comma is another one. But that, I well, let's just see. Uh, let's hit save and see whether that takes it. I suppose one of the things that we are doing here on the stream is rubber ducking, uh, like, <laughs> like a good one. Um, rubber ducking, again, for those who are new to writing code, is essentially where you talk to yourself. You talk to a rubber duck on your desk about what you've broken. So um, we've saved that. Oh my god, what have I done? That's interesting. Um, Unity. We hit play in the game. Come on. Now then, I've promised multiple times that it would work this time, so um, I'm not going to say anything this time. Come on. You can do it. Okay. That looks like it's working. Tell me. Okay, and our elevator is visible. And like I was sort of describing, you've got this kind of AR view of the data in the world. You can also view devices that are on the network. So we're gonna SSH into this elevator. It's using default credentials. So you can get in and there is our ASCII art. Woo! So um, up and down elevator, Elocrypt is your daddy now. It's just got a test sub button. But you can start to see, like, we can now put in functions in these buttons and make them do interesting things. You could make them fire off um, a uh, particle animation if we'd set one up on the elevator. Uh, that's probably for another day. Uh, and probably for me to actually take you through how you go about getting the modding tools together to be able to do that. Um, but, um, you know, we can start making sound calls um, in different ways. Uh, that's a nice, easy one that I can show you. So, let me switch back over to the code. I said, oh my god, earlier. Uh, it's because I did, did this. Um, Self normal again there we go so uh, like basically the next things we take um, th this is the yeah code to exe execute when when this button skull is clicked um, so we have the on click function here um, at the minute what that that on click does because it has a sub button underneath it it makes the sub button for that button turn up so um, we might want to change what this sub button is called for instance um, 
we might not want anything to happen. Um, I guess we just want like janky sounds to, to happen, probably. Um, so uh, if I pull up my audio spreadsheet, where would it be? We have master spreadsheet. Um, yeah, essentially, I mean, we, we could, this is this is quite a funny uh, spreadsheet. We could put all kinds of stuff in here. Um, stuff that's obvious. Yeah, we have play data view error new edition. So to yeah to to put something under on click when you click this skull and crossbones that creates a sound we write sound trigger event and if you're doing this at home with the game you can download the snippets that we have and, and it will auto complete a lot of this stuff for you um, so. It's not quite so arcane, but basically, if I paste in, oh no, that's wrong. wrong that. Play data view error is a string, and, and that's basically looking in the sound banks for a sound with that name. Um, device name is the device it comes from when we, the, the sound's location it's on this device so we just put device name um, we save that and that should make a, a kind of uh -uh type sound and then um, we can make a bunch of sub buttons so again like um, hmm. Sub button. Most important thing is the name. That and, and, and name is maybe slightly misleading because it's it's actually the the, the sort of displayed string. It, the the name of the sub button is actually defined earlier, and and this is a non named sub button, which without going into too much detail over how Lua works is. Essentially, it makes it easier for it to be ordered in an array in the order that you define it in. If you name the buttons, it, it will not order them in any specific order that you can set. Um, and uh, the why is an interesting one. It's basically because Lua is written to be so lightweight that there was no point in them trying to write something that would take the order that's written in your script um, if you're naming. Um, it's sort of an efficiency thing. Uh, so uh, you can also we can we can define the color of um, different text. So like color equals white as a tag basically. File. Let's write this in slightly later form. Ellie encrypted. No, I've done it wrong. Have I? This one that seems right to me. Yeah. Um, and we'll put another sound in, so... Maybe we'll put a different sound in. Uh, I seem to remember there was like a horn or something for, uh, for the harbour level that we've been making. That's a little giveaway there, but... Might, might not be... Um, 
accidental. Harbour, harbour, no. We've got an unlock beep. There's not that many silly sounds in yet. Note to self, write more silly sounds into the game. Alright, well, for now. We can, we'll, we'll set a car alarm on. With one. Uh, and then we'll duplicate this and make an, another button that's exactly the same. Um, we'll turn the car alarm off with it. That's fine. Um, and I think if we just turn that to stop. Right. Um, Pray to the gods because I changed a bunch of things at once instead of being clever and uh, changing things incrementally. But um, this should now work. Um, I, I assume no one is asking any questions in the chat. I'm, I'm sorry if you are. Um, I. I can't see the Twitch chat on my Twitch page. Um, you can see the viewers and, and that you're watching. Um, maybe if someone can try chatting in the window. Oh, hang on. I just found it. Hello. There you go. <coughs> um... Cool. Uh, doesn't look like I missed any questions in the in the Twitch chat. I'll keep an eye on that. I'll also keep an eye on the um, on the Discord. So let let's see whether this w is working, which it should be. I'll uh, also because we've done stuff with sound. I'll turn off the music in the background here, or I'll turn it down. Turn it off. So isn't that eerie? Um, you you probably hear uh, all the like my dog barking and the garbage truck backing up and all that kind of stuff now. Um, let's press play. Let's see. It's, it's coming. It's taking a while. But yeah, hopefully, you know, that gives you an impression. Uh, I just thought I'd pop back while Unity is loading uh, and compiling those changes. There we go. Gives you an impression of sort of relatively how simple it is to, you know, make change the kind of visuals of a device, add a couple of functions. In, in this instance, we've just added the... Um, the sound events, but you could you could change the number of enemies in the game or the sentiment that a character holds towards you or whether someone engages you in a conversation in a text message or whether you've completed an objective or whatever else by hacking one of these devices and setting up the right functions for, for what people do when they're inside of it. Um, oh, come on. Unity is not playing nice. It's gone all slow again. It was nicer with the music in the background, wasn't it? There we go. So, the, the whole reason I did this was so that hopefully you could hear... I'll turn the desktop audio up as well. Expected symbol near on click on line 35. Okay, 
So, let's fix that. 35 <clears throat> Yeah, guess guess what it is. It's a comma. <clears throat> Save that. Turn that off. Restart the level. Well, re restart the editor. I could play you a different track from the soundtrack even. Could have that stuff all up. What we got? Yeah, here's some more of the score to off grid for you to have a little listen to. This, this is the track. sit here and we can appreciate Lyndon's great music. Um, does anyone have any questions about the score while that stuff is loading? I'd, I'd love to get your feedback on what you think of the music to off-grid. This track, or you can just loop, oh, I think it will loop around again.
can make a toaster you can hack. Um, yeah. Um, the question is, what would you make it do? Would you make it set on fire and um, burn a load of stuff down? Uh, set off a, an alarm? Aimbot soda machine? Yeah, I think making making the soda machine fire cans at people would be good. Yeah, upon us, it's always a missing comma. Um, Right, so then, um, I'm going to turn this music back down so we can hear what's going on in the game, and you should now. Oh, come on, Unity. I, there's definitely something going on. There's, it keeps trying to bake something in the background, which is slightly bizarre because there's no auto light mapping or anything like that. Um, so something has something changed. So here we go. There's our elevator. Put SSH on. It's got default creds, we get into it. Makes the sound. You hear that? So that's just a little scripted sound. This one turns a car alarm on for us, so you know you can imagine if it was a hackable car. We've done hackable cars in uh, in another demo that we did for for Shah Hacker Conference. Um, you know, if you break into the car, you can set the alarm off or turn it to, to distract people or whatever else. That button turns the alarm off, turns it on, turns it off. Um, Hopefully you get an idea. Like there's, you can change everything and anything in 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 Lua that's in the game with the functions that you put into this. So it, you can set up some kind of chainable vulnerability between multiple devices, or uh, you can set off, um, uh, like I said, some kind of visual particle effect. You could you could do the um, the sprinkler hack out of um, the movie hackers. Uh, and have a sprinkler particle effect and then you could have that sprinkler particle effect that make something wet that affected something else um, and made it short circuit or, or whatever else so you know there, there, there's there's a whole load of stuff that you can do with this this kind of thing um, yeah I think like that's probably a good place to stop I was aiming on going till 7 we've just hit 5 past 7 uh, apologies for the technical hiccups of me essentially loading up a broken build of the game that I had to debug. But um, you got to see how it works and how we fix it and, and how relatively simple it is to fix some of this stuff um, and, and to play around with it. Um, I suppose, like, should, should we do a few minutes of any questions? Um, I'll just pop my head into... Discord or the stream. There's nothing in the Discord. I'm mod ninety eight. Have you got any questions or demon uh, about like you both kind of suggested in the in the chat some devices you might want to to write for hacking? Have you got any ideas or questions around? what that might be. I know that I've only shown you the basics for now. Um, we, I will be going into, as a, as a sort of plan going forward, more detail on uh, how to do this stuff. When can I fire the soda machines? Um, as soon as the alpha on the fire in my sodas, there you go. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, you could, you probably do something interesting and custom with that as a tagline as well. Um, yeah, there'll there'll be something you can get your hands on relatively soon. I'm I'm probably only allowed to say that much. Obscure Moth is in charge of how we kind of make announcements when and where and and, and this and the other. Um, you guys are both in the Discord, so. Um, like being in there is exactly um, the right place to hear 
announcements on when you can get your hands on something to play around with. The game is very much pre-alpha, so um, you know we're still building these features, and we want to get you in there early to tell us how you'd like us to extend the modding API, what kind of things you'd like to mess around with. Um, <laughs> making the hacking stuff way more trolling. Yeah, and that's what I want. You know, I, I, like I, I'm going to make fairly kind of straightforward content in it that um, sort of delivers the core storyline and takes us through the narrative and sets up the world. And I want you to be kind of doing the stuff that uh, makes it more trolling or more funny or uh, like is just plain mad, to be honest. Um, I want you to expand that universe. I want you to tell me how you want to expand that universe. And me, Pontus and Steve will work diligently to expand the modern capabilities alongside you essentially there's already a hell of a lot that is um that is in there uh for you to play with i got quite excited last night while i was um just setting up uh what i thought i was going to do for today in the stream with this this sort of ransomware ascii art thing um but th there is just so much functionality and there's loads of ways that this then has a knock-on effect for the ai and the metadata and the way you're profiling characters and stuff like that um, so yeah, loads of cool stuff. You can you can read ahead on the wiki. It's work in progress, but it's a good place to get an idea. You especially there's a page called Getting Started with Level Kit. If you're excited about how this all works, um, I'll just pop over there quickly. Show you. But essentially, I'll show you how to get there. Actually. Let's transition over. To the base page. So like if, if you went to wiki.offgridthegame.com, you would see this main page that says hey, you're a modder head to the modding section below. Hit modding. This is the landing page for the modding stuff. It's good to just read this. It gives you the kind of concepts of what's where, um, a basic manual on what we've got that we've built so far needs updating actually. Um, the way that the mods are structured, um, how you can build geometry, um, stub missions and the basic process, but it also <clears throat> has this getting started with level kit and building your first level. Um, kind of tutorials so this one's a good one that tells you basically how with your copy of unity um, that you downloaded you can set up once you once you eventually have a copy of the game um, you can set up doing uh, doing stuff with the modding tools and the other one building your first level is probably good to read ahead of time because that actually takes you through Level design templates, networks, how they're set up, lighting and light probes, uploading your mod, and, and the kind of the basics. Um, and this will all be fleshed out in more detail by us, by by you guys. If you've got suggestions for things, um, if you want to jump on the wiki as a member, um, uh, just go and drop uh, a line in the modding channel um, in the Discord, and uh, we can get you hooked up with an account to to be able to, um, well, you, there's nothing for you to edit yet because you don't have any any knowledge of things to sort of su suggest or fix for us just yet. Um, or certainly, you know, we'll, we'll want your suggestions more once you're actually in the game. Um, but, um, yeah, um, that's kind of that. We've got... Um, iMod said, I'm a set of toaster off, which in turn sets the sprinklers off, which in turn causes a short and takes out the power. Perfect. And, you know, we have hackable light groups and fuse boxes, so you could you can do that and short, triple the wire, uh, the, uh, oh, God, sorry. I've just realized that I've made, like, some horrific cascading window. Let's go back to this. Um, yeah, uh you can do all that. You, like that's a great little chain of events, and you know that that will work nicely. Um, 
Lee says you're going to make the soda machine rumble and move its position, following security guards, then donk them with a the soda. Uh, do you know what? I, actually, I think you probably can. Uh, you certainly can use the animator to schedule moving it around. Um, I don't know whether it can tap into the position of a nav agent. Um, <laughs> that'll be something we have to think about. But again, yeah, the Soda Boy 9000 will be... Um, that's the sort of thing we want you suggesting and saying that you'd like to do uh, and us extending the API if, if it doesn't do it yet. So... Right on. That sounds great. Um, cool. Well, I think that's a good place to stop, probably. Um, thanks very much uh, for jumping in with me, learning a little bit about modding in off-grid. Um, it's just the start of this. As I said, we're going, I'm going to be doing a lot of these. There is a hell of a lot of content to cover with what is moddable. Tell me if I'm going too fast probably don't tell me if I'm not going fast enough because I think lots of people pick things up at different speeds and I'd like these things to be a resource for um, absolute beginners and a few of you folks who uh, have jumped in with us already um, in the Discord have a, a good level of technical knowledge so it, I'm, I might be sort of over explaining some things but bear in mind that this wants to be a resource for people who don't necessarily have a programming or a dev background or a technical background um hackable robots that's a, that's a good suggestion i i want to put hackable um uh vacuum cleaners um and you know like office robots is is certainly the kind of next step up from that um there's also like the possibility of doing some stuff with drones we've we've already got some stuff installed along those lines to show you um so yeah uh there's not just human characters to, to engineer there are also um thinking devices rather than just dumb smart smart stuff <laughs> henry being pwned yeah exactly yeah no that's good yeah we'd have to we'll have to obviously for copyright reasons have to call him harry or something but yeah exactly Harry Hoover. Um, yep, uh, I guess the only sort of other thing to say is like and subscribe, uh, join the Discord, jump on Twitter and give us a follow. We're on Reddit. The Reddit is uh, actually a really nice place to catch the updates for our regular dev blog as to what's changing in the game. So go to reddit r slash offgrid the game. Um, or you can go to blogspot.offgridthegame, I believe. Um, we're here on Twitch. Um, like, subscribe. Please subscribe. Like, um, we, we don't have it. It's set up for charging subscribers, or, or maybe I don't understand Twitch, actually. Um, definitely, like, give us a thumbs up and, and give us a follow or whatever it is that you do on here. And, and maybe try and teach me a bit more about it um, as we go. Um, and I'll probably um, I'll probably be in the, the Discord briefly um, for a bit um, if you've got any follow-up questions that you can't think of right now. Uh, we're planning on doing these dev streams uh, basically uh, on, on a Thursday every week. Um, so yeah, let me know if this works for you or if the timing isn't good for you. Um, and let me know, like, as I start to explain more stuff about the game, let me know if I've missed something or there's something that I've, I've skipped over that I think is obvious that I haven't explained properly. And I'll, I'll try and make sure that each stream I, I kind of backtrack and recover or expand on an element I've missed, as well as moving you forward through other elements of the Lure API and stuff like that. Uh, and of course, we've got the kind of um, the hex and kex uh, hack uh, hack play hacking games to do with um, hacker mates like Darren um, and uh, hopefully Mustafa and Jake and Lowry. Uh, they'll all at some point pop in and do some some guest streaming and, and some playing of some hacker games and some some telling of ye olde hacker stories. So. Um, 
Yeah. Cool. Um, thanks, Damon. Yeah, so hopefully it looks like you said that uh, the stream's been good and I've covered things in the right kind of detail, so that's good. Just want to say thanks again. This is um, fun and I am getting used to it. Um, and I think they're just going to get better and better because um, I, I for, for instance, won't open up a Unity project with a bug in it at the start of the next one. I'll make sure it works. Cool. Thanks again, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the Discord. See you soon.